Welcome back. Joining me right now is our studio guest. Before I formally introduce him, let me tell you the popular phrase, we are your kid, why are us? He's 27 years of age from Benway State, a fitness enthusiast, entrepreneur who enjoys rocking black and blue, and he's rocking black today. His dream car is a Lamborghini. Who knows, maybe that has changed. Kid is the CEO of Valley Agriculture and Foods Company in Nigeria. Kid Wire also co-founded AK Exports, a company that is completely involved in exports from Nigeria. He attended Nottingham Trent University for his first degree. He also obtained a master's degree in business sciences from the same university. Some say he's a combination of arrogance and confident personality. What's good, bro? Good, man. Thanks for having Welcome me on the show. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So when you hear arrogance and confident personality, how does that make you feel? Um, you know, like I said before, I always respect people's opinions. Mm. Um, it doesn't really make me feel any type of way. I look at it and be like, okay, cool, that's your opinion. I respect that. That's how you feel about me. It's not my job to change anyone's opinion about me. I know what I want to do in life, mm. where I want to go. I know how I conduct myself. As right. long as I stick to my, my morals, I'm happy. All right. So um, during your eviction, you were talking to Abel Khan. When he asked you what was next for you, you said your team is very hardworking. What did you mean by that exactly? Oh, I know, I know, I know each and individual person on my team, and I knew whatever the case was, they're hardworking. Even even as I went into the house, I knew they had my back. I mean, the same way you're showing now, you know your team's mm. very dedicated, and you mm -hmm. know whatever happens, they have your back. Mm. Every team needs to be hardworking. So that's literally what it means. Like my team have my back, extremely hardworking, and I love them. All right, so your dad is a billionaire and that is no news to anyone anymore. But um, what are the chances of a rich kid winning Big Brother Nigeria? Um, Using yourself as a case study, let's focus the, on you. The chances of anyone winning this competition, they have a chance. It doesn't matter who you are, you have a chance. Mm. Um, some might have a better chance than others. Mm. Um, but then again, this is the game where there's a lot of twists and turns. Uh, is based on public perception. So one year, you could want this kind of person to win. Next five years, we could have a completely change of heart and want uh, a rich kid to win. So I think every year is different. Um, the chances might be a little bit slimmer, but that does not mean you don't have a chance. Mm. Again, it depends on what you go there to do. Like, what are your reasons of going there? Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you go there knowing you just want to win the money, just that, and you're from a wealthy background, it may be a little more difficult. But if you go there knowing you want to make friends, have a good time, um, do something different, you know, try and be a little more independent, then that's, that's a really good thing for you. So I think it depends on what you want it for. Right. So you're in the spotlight right now, and um, you had your business before you went into the Big Brother house. What's the plan for your business? Is it going to be on old for now, or are you going to be going back into your business as soon as you're done with all the media? You, or you can't even wait for all of this to be over so you can focus on your business, which, um, which the, is the case. The, for the previous business, um, that's going to be on hold uh, for now because I have too many new exciting projects that I want to focus on. For example, uh, my foundation, which I want to start very soon, will probably take a lot of my time. Mm. Um, Tell us about your foundation. Yeah, foundation. So my foundation is basically, so the issue we have in the world, not just Nigeria, but the world, is that we will, I think we can all agree that we can't cure poverty. Mm. I think we all agree on that. But what I can do is I can give one person or empower one person who can then go on to empower or feed 10 other people, and those 10 people can go and empower 20, uh, then it causes a trickle effect where it's just spreading. True. And my goal <clears throat> eventually for our great nation is to have a growing middle class or have a growing economy of you know, entrepreneurs or uh, artists or dancers or whatever it is. You know, so I'm just trying to give back what little I can to a country that's given me so much. Uh, Do you understand? I feel like I, I cannot be satisfied if I have not helped the people around me. Right. I mean, what else are you doing on this planet? It's just to do things by yourself. It doesn't work like that. You've got to empower others. You have to grow together. <clears throat> so so that's what I tend to do. So what's an interview with Kid Wire without having fun? So let's play a game called Put a Finger Down. All right, so if you've done it, one finger down. Yeah, if you've done it, one finger down. If not, <clears throat> it stays up. All right. right. So like this, right? Let's play a game. Put a finger down if you have been thrown out of a bar or in restaurant. Put a finger down if you have been fired from a job. Put a finger down if you have gotten food poisoning in another country. Put a finger down if you have cheated on a test. Put a finger down if you have fallen in love with someone at first sight. 
Put a finger down if you have been in a situation where you thought you seriously might die. <laughs> Put a finger down if you have tripped or bumped into someone because you were looking at your phone. Put a finger down if you have broken something expensive because you got mad and threw it. My Xbox pad. Put a <laughs> finger down if you have been attracted to a friend's parents. Put a finger down if you have sent an embarrassing text to the wrong person on your phone. Can I put two fingers? <laughs> Let's play. All right, so I have um, two fingers up. You have two fingers up. Okay, we're not bad guys. <laughs> we're not bad guys. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, uh, we, we didn't do it all. We didn't do it all. <laughs> all right, so let's get back into yeah, sure, sure. your life, right? You said your aim is not to wasn't to win the Big Brother game, right? Yeah. So, what exactly was the point of getting into the competition? Um, thank you for that question. So, basically, uh, I've always said that I want to go in there and network because that's primarily what mm. I do is networking, connecting people. So, I went there to network and make friends. Um, also, with the foundation I want to start, I wanted to um, use the Big Brother as a platform to obviously grow my foundation and to also let people know that you know this is the kind of person I am and I love giving back. So, yes, it was never about the money, um, but it was about other things. And I think every individual goes in there with their own mm. goals in mind. I think in life, you have goals and objectives that you set and you hope to attain them. So I feel like I have obtained what I wanted to obtain there and I could not be any more grateful. Off the back of that, what, what would you say is the strongest network you've built out of everyone you've mingled with in the Big Brother House? It's actually a collective unit. Mm. I've always said in numbers, you're more powerful. Mm. Uh, so getting everyone to actually be friends with each other was uh, 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 one of my main goals. And by the way, we're actually one of the tightest groups. Yeah. Um, despite how it may look on TV, we're actually really, really close. Mm. Um, so I agree. So you guys do a lot. You're very careful. You know. Yeah, we're, we're really good. If you see it, there wasn't really much intense arguments mm. as, as of, I think, as previous seasons. But um, for me, yeah, it's just getting everyone to get along with each other, um, being cool with everyone. And I feel like I've done that well. All right, so of course, everybody wants to know, like, when you got out of the Big Brother house, what was the first thing you did? Like, oh, finally, I'm outside. First thing I did? That you couldn't do in the house, obviously. Oh, um... Oh, I called um, my family, man. I called my family, because just let them, let them know I'm okay. That was the first thing I did. My mum, my dad, you know. And what do you miss the most about being outside? when you were in there? Options and choices what to do, do you whatever mean? you want. I mean, there, you, you, you know, obviously it's very limited, mm -hmm. but in life, I like the, the option of doing things that I want. You know, wake up at 3 a.m., go somewhere or drive somewhere or being able to, literally just options. Like, I, I don't like to be limited. Mm. You know, in the house, you're limited. You, you know what's coming next. You, you have a routine. It's the same routine every day. But in normal life, your routine can change. You have the option of changing your routine. Mm -hmm. So I just miss being in control of my life and being able to decide to do one thing or actually change that and do another. In as much as that sounds good, what do you miss about being in the house? Oh man, I miss, for sure I miss the tasks. Mm. Um, and yeah, I miss that environment of people being around 24 seven and you know, playing games, joking with each other, that kind of boarding school environment. But I miss the task, definitely, that, they were fun. All right, it's been yeah. amazing having this chat with you, Kid Wire. Thank you for drinking and spilling tea with yes, me thank you. on this episode. I am Ifeo Luoshike. Tea time continues right after this break with Ifeo Mai. Stay tuned.